<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. And here, I'm going to be covering a little bit of a tip or a trick for you all in regards to Xbox 360 NAND read and write wires, and really how you can upgrade them to make them easier to solder to, desolder, and just work with in the future so they also get worn down much less over time. This is really helpful if you're going to be working on multiple different systems, and really once you do this upgrade, it just makes it so much easier to do later on. Here I'll actually show my wires that I've been using for years. These wires I originally got with my Nandex and I did the upgrade on here. Now a lot of people who have seen my tutorials and videos over the years have asked me, why do my wires look so different? What did I do here? Well, the little modification or upgrade I did is actually, I guess, simpler than you would expect. It's really just taking the wires, soldering the ends of them to sewing needles of all things, and then I did heat shrink tubing on them. Now, I do not want to take credit for this here. I actually want to give it where it is due, and the first time I had personally ever seen this, and the person who actually helped me here, was John, otherwise known back in the day as Johnny Guns when he was doing Xbox 360 mod work and repair. He had the exact same setup with his wires, I asked him the exact same question, and he told me about this, and after he told me, I went ahead, I did it myself. That was probably well over eight years ago, and these same wires have helped me out through so many different installs. People have said they look to be better, they look to be easier, and I can attest to that as well. However, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be taking the wires that I got from my X flasher and I'm going to be performing the upgrade on here. And I'll be showing you all how to do it as well. Now we're going to be going with a DIY approach here just because these might be many pieces of hardware that you already have on hand if you are used to working with stuff like this. On top of that, it's just going to be cheaper to do it this way and it still works pretty well. So we are going to need a few things. We're going to need the wires that we intend to use to read and write the NAND to our system. Now, this isn't just limited to NANDX. This can also be for a JR programmer, for an X flasher, even a Pico flasher, you can do this same thing as well too. We're also going to need some kind of solid piece to solder to. Now, I have already used sewing needles before and you can use those. However, with this, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to take some 22K resistors and I'm going to trim the legs off of them and use the ends of resistor legs. Legs. Just because I have many, many resistors, I'll still be able to use the resistors in the future, and instead of throwing away these legs that I typically trim, I'll be able to use them for something directly useful and helpful here. And of course, if you're wanting to follow this here directly, you'll also need some heat shrink tubing and of course a way to shrink it down. For that, I'm going to be using a barbecue lighter. Now real quick, before we continue with the upgrade, I've seen many people use these kinds of DuPont wires to read and write their NANDs, and these seem to work for I would say the 16 megabyte NANDs. However, when it comes to using these for the 4 gigabyte Corona motherboards, I would not recommend that just because a lot of people I've seen have not recommended it in regards to those. The reason being is that they are pretty strong on those sensitive pads and you can rip up the pads on a 4 gigabyte Corona model pretty easily if you solder these wires onto them. So that is just a heads up right there and why I would recommend here just using something like resistor legs overall. Now let's get into the upgrade itself. If you're going to be using sewing needles, something a little thicker like that, just make sure you have them on hand, but if you're going to be using resistors right here, all you really need to do is grab your resistors and trim back a healthy amount of the legs that you're wanting to use here. Now I've kind of got it to this point on my resistors. This is still enough for me so in the future if I want to use these resistors for installations or other modifications I can certainly do so with ease but I don't need all that extra leg here. So I'm going to be using these resistor legs that I cut on this modification here. Once you have one leg for every wire that you're going to be soldering to, just make sure you have everything all ready to go. For this, I do have my regular wiring harness. This one is going to be for 16 megabyte consoles, which is most of what I work on for the Xbox 360. And I'm sure most of what people work on as well too, who are wanting to perform this upgrade. Now let's tackle this for one of these wires. What I did was I took a little bit of flux and I just ended up dabbing some 
flux onto the end of the exposed bit of one of the wires. Then I took some fresh solder and I tinned the exposed bit of this first wire right here. Once it was tinned with a healthy amount of solder, I then brought over one of the resistor legs and just tacked it on here. If you've done RGH3 and you have soldered wires to resistors like this, you should be pretty familiar with this technique here. It doesn't take too much solder and if you have to keep touching it a bit just to make sure it is nice and clean and well done, then go ahead and do so on here. Now I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the details here because really what you did right there, you're going to have to do the exact same thing with the rest of your wires on your wiring harness. Again, just take one of your wires, make sure you have a bit of the wire itself exposed, then I would recommend dabbing a bit of flux on there, tin it with some fresh solder, and then bring over one of your resistor legs and solder it to the end of this exposed wire. Once you complete one wire, you're going to move on to the other one and just repeat until you have completed this with all the wires on your wiring harness. Now, once you've completed attaching a leg to the end of each wire, I would recommend double checking, even triple checking your work. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure you have some nice solid connections. And even if you have to wiggle the resistor legs a little bit to make sure that they're not loose and that they're nice and solid on the wire, feel free to do that as well too. Once you feel pretty confident with that, at this point, go ahead and clean up your work area as well as the resistor legs and the wires, just so you're not going to have a bunch of old flux right here. So just take some isopropyl alcohol, take some Q-tips, and clean up everything as best as you can. Once everything is cleaned up to your liking, from here, just go ahead and take some heat shrink tubing. Now, for me, I have a box of heat shrink tubing, and I just ended up taking the smallest heat shrink tubing that I had available and go ahead sleeve each of these wires one by one. We're going to work on them one at a time here but what I do is I just take a little bit of heat shrink tubing make sure it is covering most of the resistor leg and you only want a little bit of the resistor leg exposed. We don't need a whole ton. If you expose too much of it don't worry you can always trim it back a little bit but you really just want to make sure it's going to cover part of the wire insulation the actual joint itself and then most of the resistor leg. And once you have it in place, just go ahead and introduce some heat to it. Now, if you're using a lighter like what I'm using here, go ahead, give it a little bit of space, make sure you're not actually touching the flame to it, and you want to make sure that you're not getting it hot enough to the point where you undo your solder work and your leg comes loose from the wire. That has happened before with some wires and legs that I've worked with. So just make sure you get it shrunk nicely on here. It doesn't have to look perfect, but it just has to be functional. So here we go. We have one of these wires has had heat shrink applied to it and is now complete. At this point, well, you've probably guessed what's going on here. Just take another piece of heat shrink tubing, wrap it onto the next wire and leg combination, and do the exact same thing. And you're going to go through and repeat this with every single wire on your harness until your work is complete. Again, we don't want to expose too much of the resistor legs, but also make sure you're not exposing too little. If you expose too much, you can always just trim back the resistor leg a little bit once you complete your work here. So there we go. Everything is complete. Once your heat shrink tubing has cooled down, on all of your wires, I would also recommend going to each wire and grabbing the resistor leg accompanying it and wiggle it just a bit to make sure that it is not loose and it is not disconnected. As long as it's still solid and connected with the wire, you should be good to go at this point and hopefully for the lifespan of this wiring harness right here. So congratulations, you should have made this easier for yourself here now and in the future. So now next time you go to read or write the NAND on a Xbox 360, you should notice that it's going to be much easier to solder a solid piece of a resistor leg to each NAND point as opposed to soldering in some wires that have probably been used multiple times over. So congratulations, this upgrade is now complete. As a final note here, if for some reason you use this and you just decide that you don't like this upgrade, you don't want it at all, well, the good news is this upgrade is technically reversible. Essentially, what you would need to do is go in and just trim off the parts that have the resistor legs and the heat shrink tubing. And at that point, once you trim those pieces off, you then just strip your wires again, make sure they are twisted and tinned, and you should be able to continue on. But again, as someone who's been using my wires like this, except with sewing needles for so many years at this point, 
I can't really fathom going back to just normal wires on here on a regular basis. Having these solid legs to solder onto a motherboard are just so much nicer overall. So that is about it for this video here. I really do hope this helped out and this answered the question of what is up with my wires for anybody who has been following along with videos in the past and has seen these. And now you can make your own at this point. It's really nothing that is hard documented, but it's nothing that's secret either. I guess I can put it like that. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If it helped out, you learned something, and you enjoyed this, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, and you just want to trim off the ends of these legs from your wires, a dislike is fine as well, too.